Okay, let's, um, let me test that my microphone is working. Oh dear. Oh, my computer is updating now. That's fun. Um, uh, let's, let me go set the title real fast. And also get this chat up and running. Good. And let's check. Um. Hey, test the, the mic is working. Mic is working. Okay. Um, let's get this show on the road. So today I'm going to be building a uh, a simple world in Unity. Um, let's start with just creating a plane, uh, just so we don't fall to our death immediately. Two, three. Um, we just go to the hierarchy, which is over here, and you right click and you say create the object plane. Uh, now I'm going to go to the inspector view, reset its transform, so that's zero, zero, zero. Now, I also want to import the character controller. I should use my, uh, just use my webcam too. Does that really matter? Import. Um, here, um, just compiling the scripts. So character controller is Unity's built-in way to allow you to walk around. Um, the reason why this is going to be one of the first things I do is because getting scale right in Unity is really difficult. Um, um, and I need to double check that I am able to receive chat messages and I can't right now. That's a problem. Let me go fix that. Uh, recent chat. Um, hmm. Okay, I can now receive chats, which is good. Hey, what's up? Um, aren't we all? Ah, uh, yeah. That's fine. Let me go. Um, is that? I don't want that. And then, in tutorial. Let's see. What should this be? Um. Hi, what's up? Ooh, what was that? Hello, Scarlet. Scarlet? What did you just do, girl? You broke the, uh... You're crazy? Wild girl. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I know you are. You're you're like the wildest person I know. Let, let me uh let me just hmm. What camera is this? Nee. Oh, wrong camera. Cancel. Subtract it. Okay. And then let's go add a new video capture device. Webcam. Yeah. This is it, what's up? Um, uh, why, what's up? Oh, 
Oh, what's wrong with it? Okay, there you go, now that's working. Uh, okay. Nice. Okay, so let's go and drag out this. Um, let's use the, the first person shooter variant. Um, this one ignores physics, but it's also less likely to have a horrible issue. So that's a good thing. Um, I don't know. I'm playing, I'm just doing Unity right now. What are you playing? Black Ops? Oh, I'm not a really a Black Ops fan. Uh, let me see. It just it's just kind of boring. Um, let's set the radius to 0.25 because oh that looks, looks a bit skinny. 0.3. Um, as otherwise it feels a little bit constrained when you're walking around, and it's impossible to get anywhere. Okay, so now we can walk around and we can jump to our death. Hey, what's up? I'm just making stuff in Unity. What are you up to? Oh yeah, there's some yeah there's some amazing people on today. Hmm. What's up? So um, let's just let's start by adding a building support. So builder. Um, and this is going to be this building gun. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to, like, when we click, it's going to spawn whatever we want it to spawn. So, let's start with blocks. I'm teaching and doing at the same time. So, uh, I'm explaining every step. You want, I'm not, I, I'm practicing because I have to give some lectures. Um, I have to give some lectures at the university. Um... Well, if you wanna if you wanna do a one on one, there's not really anyone talking right now, so you'd be basically getting all my attention. Oh, my computer. Yeah, Unity's great. It's um, it's it's not the flashiest game engine out there. Uh, in fact, it's actually extremely not flashy. Uh. Oh yes, no, I, I love that game. Um, a lot of games use Unity actually. Um, the reason why is it it's actually the easiest for programmers. Um, it has a good editor. It's free, <laughs> which is way more important than I'd like to admit. And um, yeah, it has a uh, nice editor. Uh, let me double check that the stream health is good. It is good. Uh, that's all. I'm just trying to open another computer so I can look at the uh, chat on a different window. Yeah, we're doing great. Later. It's Elizabeth, but it's uh, Liz. That's how I say that. Oh, dear. Liz is the shorthand of it. I spell it funny because... Um, Okay, um, so in Unity, um, you can set a public variable to uh, to make a uh, publicly act. I mean, let's actually start with uh, doing upprint. So, so if um, input dot I do are they working? Nice. Um, so yeah, I. I I'm actually pretty hard of hearing. Um, uh, so get key down is like when the person first presses it. Um, and let's say key code that, well, let's say button, get button down. Uh, the reason, fire one. Okay, so Unity has this uh, concept of different import sources. Um, I'm tired. 
Why? Oh, darn it. I switched to Vorik again. I'm such a failure. Um... <laughs> Okay, so now whenever you press the fire button, it should, uh, you know, say hello, mom. Which is good. And let's go check it out. So this means that if I attach this to my camera, I'm going to attach it to the camera because it makes sense to be there. So I'm going to just drag it over to the, uh, to the first person character. And this is the part that actually has the camera on it. Um, then I should be able to click my mouse button and get um, scissors. I need to also get rid of the superfluous. Um, there's two main cameras right now in that scene, which is bad. Also, I spelled fire. Uh, let me let me check with the uh, edit. edit. Project player, player input axes fire one. Okay. And double check that. Okay, there you go. And uh, an update. Now it's there you go. Now it works. And I need to get this out of the way. Let's put this over here and make it smaller so I don't have to look at the lack of viewers all the time. It's funny um, that it, how that works. You know, you play a video game and you get a lot more people to join you. Oh well. Uh, I'm going to enable collapsing because that way I doubt it doesn't spam as often. Uh, so now, um, now let's set a uh, public. Game, uh, game object. Um, so this is going to be what we wanted. Uh, uh, so this is called thing to spawn. And um, whenever I click that button, instead of just saying hello mom, I'm going to instantiate thing to spawn. And I can set it to be at um, transform that position. So this says spawn a bot, uh, spawn whatever I, add, I I want, whatever. All right, I have to. Um, now, returning that identity actually. Um, Mean something really specific. It's um, it tells it to um, let me keep the live dashboard uh, the dashboard open. Um, so that that basically tells it. Oh dear. Where am I? There I am. Uh, that will tell it to keep the. Um, to keep it oriented with the global up. So now let's go and create a simple prefab to spawn. I'm just gonna go and uh, you know create through the object um, a sphere. So let's call this not a block. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to drag it over here to make a prefab. So now we have this prefab. I can go delete it from the world. And if I want to, I can go and modify it um, and stuff. But anyhow, this is what the thing is that we're going to be spawning. It's going to have no physics on it. It's going to have a collider. So uh, let's disable the collider right now because otherwise it's going to cause some fun problems that you'll get to see in a sec. Um, and let's mash that. Uh, let's attach it to the uh, builder script. So we just go boom, and then we can click go. And then, see, now it's spawning balls on us. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now we have all these balls everywhere. Um, let's do it better. Like, it doesn't make sense to, to, to be building the balls out um, right where I am. It doesn't, you know, it makes sense to put them where I'm looking. So let's make it do that now. Um, yeah. 
Okay. So sure. Okay, so I'm gonna physics that raycast. Um. Oh, hey, it's my my sister. Um. There. It's my sister's birthday, so I sent her a picture of a dog I found. <laughs> um. So Ray. Famous BBQ. Okay. Um, now this is a little bit strange. Um, so with uh, ray casting, it asks you to give it a ray as an input, which you know you'd, you it makes sense that it would you know it would put out a ray as an input. Um, um, Okay, so we, we started at transform that position and we wanted to go transform that forward. So that means I want to start where I'm at, and I want to go forward. So this is going to send out a raycast, um, uh, which basically is like taking a stick and shoving it out or sending a laser and saying, Where does this hit? Um, and then in order to get the information on where it's hit, um, we have to give it. Um, and out raycast it okay so this basically tells unity um, hey go get a stick from where I'm standing where the camera is um, the way it's facing and tell me where it ends up so I'm gonna go right now print um, raycast it okay um, this will mean that uh, it's now going to tell us that we're, we're hitting things. So you see it, that right there means that I, I hit something, which means the raycast code is working properly. Now let's go and instead of spawning this uh, this ball wherever really nilly, let's go actually spawn it where the ray is hitting. So instead of transform that position, we say raycast hit that point. Okay, and that's basically where did it hit. Okay, so let's go and run it again. As you see, uh, I'm going to go change the color so you can see them better. Uh, but it's spawning the balls where we would expect them to be spawned. Um, yeah, I'm going to kind of want to set it. Um, I'm not actually sure if anyone's online right now. Um, but if you guys want me to make it so um, I don't keep all tabbing and so you can always see both windows, let me know, okay? Um, I could just, you know, do this. That that would make sense. Uh, but then it feels kind of cramped and I need to make this so that it... There you go. Yeah, I'll do it this way. And if the font's too small or something, um, let me go... Okay, so let's uh, let's go modify this. So in order to modify it, let's say I want to change the color of these balls. Okay, so let's go create a material. Okay, a ball mat. Okay, now I'm gonna make balls. The best color for a ball, everyone knows, is red. So let's go and make the ball red, and let's make it shiny, real shiny. Okay, not that shiny. It's a bit too shiny. And kind of metallic. -y. It's just point 0.1 metallic. Um, metallic is a weird constant. It's basically it doesn't end up usually around here. Um, it's a it's one of the uh, pipelines of uh, you know, these things. But it, it basically is how much does it get its inf its color information from the environment as opposed to using its own environment. So now, um, as you see uh, that I forgot to press the apply button. Apply basically means see not a block. Boom. Apply. And then it updates it. As you show you right there, I had to go right. I hovered over the um, asset windows, and I forced it to. Sh I scrolled. That causes it to force update all the uh, redraw all of these things because Unity is weird. Okay, and boom. So now we can spawn these balls, and like I can walk. I can. I didn't enable the physics on them. So let's go re-enable physics on them. 
Um, boom. Okay, so nice. We can spawn all these balls now, um, which we can go use to build whatever. So, and we can go and climb on it. That's pretty cool. Okay. But, um, you see right now, it's it's making it always so that it's inside the thing that I am building on. And I would rather that not be the case. So, um, let's fix that. The way you fix that, uh, the easiest way that comes to mind uh, to fix that is I'm going to move this... Uh, Uh, let's just add uh, to point a spawning point. Um, may cast hit that normal, which is basically which way is up, um, and then we just need to multiply that by 0 0.5 f, um, and that f right there means it's a floating point value as opposed to a double. Um, I think they here. Let me try something really fast. Yeah, I know. Um, so Unity. Um, Unity by default uses 32-bit uh, math, uh, which is generally acceptable. Oh, one second, I'm gonna go pick a couple things. Uh, it's generally quite acceptable. Um, it can cause problems with larger environments. Um, if I have time, I'll go and show you some. An example, like if you have a solar system, a Kerbal Space Program. Um, you're gonna have a problem. I need to grab this one again. Um, so this is basically telling it um, the thing I spawned on make me go away from it. So now the um, See, all the balls are now sit sitting on top of it, so they're not, like, inside everything. Okay, that's cool. So, let's, um, oh, funny. Okay, so that right there, that's because I have a collider myself. When I look down, I'm looking into my own collider, and that's not what I want to do. Um, I should probably fix that, but I'll, I'll do that later. Um... There's a couple different ways I can do that, and I want to talk about the different approaches. So, um, let's now go and, now let, let's say we want to build this like Minecraft, okay? Because Minecraft is famous, and, um, I love Minecraft. Hopefully next year I get to work on it. <laughs> you want to move this right now? Oh, hey, Blossoms. Um, so, the uh, most sensible thing to do then is to take that point that we're about to spawn in and round it. Um, let me check if they added it. No, they didn't yet. Okay, and uh, because now in Unity, all the math functions are in math, uh, math f dot, you know, so math f dot round, okay? Uh, they don't have any vectorized versions of it, so spawn point that x so I'm just gonna have to issue um, this command a bunch of times now cool C sharp trick um, using static um, unity engine that math this basically means I no longer need to you type uh, so I can say spawn point dot y equals uh, round spawn point dot y okay um, which just cleans it up it basically means all these me uh, all those method those static methods from that class make them available here without me having to type the class name and I switched to the work again I did. I honestly I need to go disable that on this account. Um, and let's see I do that last one. 
Um, yeah, so that's good. Um, so this is basically now forcing it to round it. So uh, let's quickly switch this to be uh, there's not a block to actually secretly be a cube. Uh, uh, whatever, it should be a cube now. Oh dear. Ah, excuse me. Okay, um, that's a that's an issue because I'm using I'm targeting uh, Unity. So Unity. Uh, okay, this is a a sore point of an old an old Unity gag basically. It was on Unity. They used .NET like 2.0 or something for a bajillion years, well past the fact that everyone was not nobody else was using it at that point. Um, I need to restart Unity basically. Hello me. Hello Twitch. No, I have. Oh, I have viewers. Okay, hello viewers. Um, just has to recompile all that stuff. Yay, OBS. Um, OBS is great. Okay, now it's showing up properly, and uh, the using static is acceptable. But I already got rid of it because yay, easy. So now, um, we built a Minecraft esque thing. Yay. <laughs> Can I have uh, a couple billion dollars now? No? Okay, fine. Okay, let's uh let's go fix that um let's go fix the collider nonsense. Okay, so right now when I try to build down, um it doesn't let me. Um because I'm casting into myself. Now there's two ways we could fix this. Um, the first way is to check if it that I, if the thing that I'm casting into is attached to me, then don't let me place. That's the easier way. Um, but I kind of like being able to to place blocks inside yourself, uh, just because it's always really annoying to place that last block, even though it physically doesn't make any sense to be able to do so. I'm gonna let you do it. So. Um, Let's just change, the easiest way to do this is to create a new layer, uh, layers, and let's call it player. Okay, so now let's move um, this thing into the player layer. Let's change children, um, and then this raycast, I am going to tell it, um, ooh, layer mask. Um, I need to negate, uh, I think, get mask, and then player, um, and then negate that, which in C-sharp, the boolean negation is the tilde. So, uh, let's test it out. Where's the compiler error? Oh, um, I added an additional parenthesis and I forgot to close it. So let's, let's get down to business. So let's do, place down, didn't place down, uh, didn't place inside myself. It's good. Um, it's not placing anywhere. No. Okay, so that's bad. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let's try, okay, something really cool about Unity. I just edited the script. I'm not going to even stop Unity. And it lets me edit it. Okay, so that's not working. Let me, um, there's no shame in looking things up occasionally. Recast. So just ignore layer. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's uh, choose the. Hmm. Now that does seem. Okay. 
Okay, let, let's uh let's try uh something really fast. So layers, we know layer default exists. Default. Uh, D E F F A U L T. Okay. Yes, I spelled default correctly. That's a good thing. Let's uh let's check it out. So red dash you know you compile again. So now it should only be able to recast against things in the default layer. If they cast hit that there you go. Turn. There you go. Um that was the simple solution I was talking about, by the way. Um, Yep, there you go. Fixed it. Not on the first time, but yay. Okay, so now let's uh let's make it so that I can build multiple things, multiple types of blocks. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to go grab a texture pack really fast. So let's go find Minecraft texture pack open source. So let's just grab an open source texture pack now. Um, yay, open source texture pack. Uh, let's just download it right now. Um, yeah, no. Are you serious? Okay. No. Um, there you go. Saving the file. Now I should be able to go to my downloads. And I should be able to... Where is it? Trove to Venture Pack. Um, 7 zip extract here. Um, and I should be able to just drag and drop this into Unity. So, and now Unity is going to import all these textures. So, this is obviously not the most uh, scalable. Uh, way to do this. Um, it, uh, basically, instead of uh, doing a bit, like right now, every single um, block is taking a couple uh, hundred bytes because it instantiates, instantiates its own glider, its own everything, and that's bad. Um, it's totally not scalable. So, Um, see, I can uh, the texture pack is finished update installing it, so now I can go grab dirt. Say, 
Let's see. Twin. This texture pack seems to be missing. Let me, let me just check this really fast. I don't see a single, yeah. Okay, so this texture pack doesn't have like a dirt texture or anything. It just must use the, okay. So Unity, uh, for Minecraft, when you have a texture pack, if you don't specify a texture, then it will just keep the, uh, the standard default one for that uh, block type which is fine in most circumstances uh, but in our circumstance we don't have a standard default dirt texture uh, so let's go grab a different texture pack um, and uh, I want one that's cartoony so takes uh, simplistic or should I say, is there an arty one? Art. Let's do art. Oh wait, no, this will be. Hmm. I wanted just a really arty one, but I guess I'll do uh, simplistic. And okay. This one has lots of pixels, but that is perfectly acceptable. Um. So this is. Uh, we're gonna use this for now. Um, where is this? Honestly, I'm not used to not having ad blocker, so let's go get your ad blocker. You block origin. Okay. Oh, that's not the right one. It's Firefox. Yeah. I um, I just set this computer up so. It's the one that I want because okay so with you block um, there is a bit of drama there's basically Raymond Hill uh, as far as I know he was the original creator of this um, swimming pronouns but it was the original creator of this app um, and then he didn't have time to go work on it so let's go reload this uh, one of these things has to be a darn download link not uh, Download an official site. Yes, please. Um, okay. That, that, let's just download the 64 pixel version of it. This, that was surprisingly difficult to just download a stinking texture pack. Uh, so now let's go. Not that one. Simply sharp. Okay. So I'm going to use this texture pack. I have to extract it first. Let's just grab the, uh, this time let's just grab the texture that we need uh, just to make it go faster. Um, let's create folder texture pack. Hello. Hey. Uh, so let's go grab some blocks. Um, I'm gonna say we want cobblestone, and these are this is actually a pretty decent texture pack. Maybe I'll upgrade it to the uh, and um, how about some gra uh, dirt? So there's two types of work. Uh, there you go. Dirt, and how about diamond block? Nice. Okay, so now there are three types of uh, blocks in the world. Mm. Yeah, I'll just grab a couple more that I'll need. Stone and iron ore. Okay, so now there are a couple types of blocks in this world. Let's make it so that we can select what type of block we have. Uh, I'm not going to implement an inventory system quite yet. Um, and I'm going to use the immediate mode um, UX. I will do a proper tutorial on uh, 
on the new style uh, UI in a little bit but in this scenario it's easier to use uh, the immediate version of it so let's go and create a material for each one of these um, the reason why we're creating a material for each one of these is uh, frankly it's the easiest way to do this um, so let's just go create 3d object a cube um, and just go boom unity will automatically generate a materials folder and start generating materials so we just have to do this once for every object um, if we were doing this properly um, we would create a, uh, a little importer that will automatically generate those materials from the metadata um, and it would actually only use a single material or a handful of materials because every material you have in a scene makes your scene slower. Um, but because it's a small scale test right now and I don't want to get overly complex on the first video, I am going to do it this way. So, um, now let's, let's then, um, let's go and create a block class. Um, standard assets, assets, uh, create C sharp script block. Okay, uh, this is just so that we can add some amazingly fun stuff later. Let's go, um, let's go and drag this out to the Aaron block class. Boom. Uh, let's go create a new folder, create folder, blocks, and then hello, uh, and then we just have to, what are you up to, hon? And then we just, boom, and then we, we, need, uh, we create a, another one, the object, cube. And uh, this one is going to have stone. Okay. So, and then let's go and drag it over to blocks. Now, the next step is to uh, make this be able to take a bunch of different types. So, public. Um, block array blocks. So instead of just having a single um, block, we have a now array of it, and then public and selected index. So now we have a bunch of blocks, and then I can go to here, and I can tell it then what are my block types. So I'm going to say that I have two types of blocks. Uh, sorry, and to say zero, I have two types of blocks, and they are stone is zero, and iron ore is one. Okay, and now I should. Uh, next thing is is to make these. So let's go to block. Uh, let's go create a property very fast. Now properties in C sharp are basically like fields, except that they're uh, they don't necessarily have to. Um, except they don't necessarily need to ha they don't necessarily have a value directly attached to them when you call them they can go run some code so um, so oh, darn. so y you basically have these getters uh, and then an optional setter or yeah okay so then I can say return 42 Okay, um, but I'm going to make this a uh, texture uh, return a component render material that texture main texture. Okay, so now
uh, so show texture. Uh, this is basically a, ten, uh, a, a placeholder right now. Um, before uh, I actually get it to until we actually start rendering them, uh, so that we'll be able to support things such as beds and whatnot. I'm gonna go update the Twitch title. Um, a Minecraft clone. There you go. Updated the uh, Twitch title. So now I am building a Minecraft clone. Okay, so uh, let's go and use the immediate mode GUI. It might complain on me. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, the immediate mode GUI in a while. So. Um, Let's just try this real fast. So do we lay out that box? Hello. Um Yeah, no. Oh wait, on GUI. My bad. Yeah, so this old school GUI has to Whatever. It's, it's simpler than using the, the current version of the GUI um, for when you're getting started. So you see now it will show it. Now I should be able to go um, so for every block and blocks I'm gonna go block that texture uh, GUI texture so this is basically telling it to go and draw me all the blocks that I can select. Oh, did I not? No point or exception. What point did I get that? Didn't even have a material, dang. Okay, now let's go and uh, just manually sign it. So I'm gonna just make this a public texture, give me texture. Um so I obviously messed something up. So, and I don't want to stop leaving. Okay, there you go. So now I have that all set up, and there you go. We have the two types of of, of blocks in the universe. All right, there you go. Now we can render those. Now we need to make them selectable, uh, which is. GUI layout that list selection grid um, and then so this is called the next thing I'm going to show you is something called linkful uh, it's language integrity uh, great, uh, integrated querying um, so using system dot linkful okay. You have to say that before you do it. Um, now I can say blocks dot select, um, then block block dot texture, um, and then dot two array. Um, then x count. I'm gonna set the x count to one. Uh, five. I know. How about that? Okay, um, and then I have to. That looks a little bit weird right now, but uh, this GUI layout that's like an uh, selection grid um, returns whenever you if you here you'll see in a second. So 
I can click on it and then it returns the new value. So if it stays the same, it'll keep returning the same value. And if it changes, it changes. Um, it's not very evident which one is selected, but we'll deal with that in a letter um, probably in tomorrow. Um, Now let's um, let's go make it so that that's the block that we spawn. So instead of just spawning uh, really nilly, uh, let's go say var block to spawn equals um, and then instead of spawning wherever I'm telling it to spawn right now, which is right here, thing to spawn, we do boom. And then we can get rid of this thing to spawn field because it's no longer going to be used. And then I, um, so right now it doesn't take input for, uh, but we can now build with different materials. So now build a little house. Now let's say we want to delete things. How should we do that? Now the easiest way to do that, uh, I'll, so let's uh, let's let's um, I'm gonna refactor this code a little bit. I'm gonna move it out so that we always recast. Otherwise, we're gonna have recasting um, twice. Uh, raycasting code in every scenario basically because it's a really common thing to do um, so if I'm pressing the uh, build button then do that if input that get button down fire two so if you click the other mouse button um, It, and you got a hit. Then we will destroy um, recast hit that uh, that game object. So this basically tells it to go and delete that uh, delete that block from existence. Now, normally if you're building a manga guy, the way you want to delete block, oh dear, I delete myself. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's go fix that really, um, let's fix that really quick, quickly. So git component um, let's see, is there a has, has component? Nope. Uh, let's let's add an additional uh, constraint that it has to have a block it has to be a block the thing I'm deleting. Just for sanity purposes. And um Let's move this over here just because that's also sanity purposes. Hit game object. So let's go press that button. There we go. Now I can delete only blocks. I can't delete the bedrock, which is technically not a block. I'm gonna go import a blood a bedrock texture real fast just to uh oh dear. Yeah, that's uh that's gonna be a problem. So let's just make this humongous. Infinite. Definitely infinite. Anything else you say is fake news. So uh bed rock. Oops, whatever. Now I need to just move this to texture packs. Are you here? Uh, 
and delete that. There you go. Um, I'm not, I think Bedrock might literally be a solid black in this texture pack, but nonetheless, um, let's pretend that it isn't, and I'm going to momentarily make it so it's not. Otherwise, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So let's just, okay, so as you see, um, it's really scout, uh, stretched out of, uh, really stretched out, and, oh wait, I selected one that has uh, no albedo. Um, once again, I need to choose one that actually has an albedo. Um, let's see. Oh, that looks good. There you go. So, as you see, right now there's only one block. Now, there's a simple way. I scaled this up by a factor of 100. Uh, by default, it's 10 meters wide. So, we can just set its tiling to be a thousand times. Oh, uh, one divided by a thousand. My bad. And let's zoom in to see that it worked. Or if it didn't. In case I need to figure it out. Oh, and that texture is set to not repeat. So let's go set it just to. And let's go to that texture. Hmm, the texture is set to repeat. No. Oh. I was right about the dimensionality the first time. And uh, let's move this down by 0.5 meter. So even though it makes sense for it to be at, at zero, um, we are centering the blocks. So the block's center point is at, okay. So now when we go look it out, we have a, uh, we have a centralized blocks made out of iron. Cool. And it's all 5.5 in each dimension. So. Let's just go point negative zero point five, negative zero point five in all dimensions. Just so that the uh, textures all line up. There you go. Now let's make it so that we can select with black uh, I'm holding by the sheer power of my will. Um, alternatively, uh, by pressing what button should it be? Up scroll wheel. Sure. Um, actually, let's just make it, um, I actually don't know, um, if the scroll wheel is, okay, so it returns a delta value, so let's just set it so, um, Let's just write a little bit of code for that. Um, let's set it so if let's just print. Because I'm not no, I don't actually know what value I should expect right now. So let's go and see what values do I get. And also may, need to make sure when I unpause it to set bedrock back to having bedrock texture. So it seems um, like um, zero is a really common value. Um, and so it's like 0 0.2. Collapse it again. So 0 point my uh, point 0.1, point 0.2. So let's just say if it's a if it's positive. So let's just cast that into an int. And then say selected index plus this, and then the entire thing modulated by um, blocks that length. Okay, so that's a bit of a, a, a doozy, and I'm going to explain every bit of it. So this right here means I want to be looking, uh, selecting, and let me check how much time it's been. It's only been an hour, that's good. Um, I want to select 
the black uh, to change like okay so take the input of the mouse wheel and um, mouse in, uh, wheel input okay so mouse wheel, take the uh, the sign of the mouse of the input wheel convert to an integer so it's like it would be either zero one or negative one okay and then add that to my selection index so it will either move up by one or move down by one okay and then I want to do a modular. Now that's the confusing part. Uh, but modular, what it means is that if it if the value becomes uh, in this case two, uh, it will roll back down to zero. Okay. Uh, so it's basically if it ever gets above that a certain value, it subtracts it by that value. So because uh, C sharp counts from zero, so the first thing you have is zero. The second thing is one. Um, so on and so forth. Um, this will result in it always being a valid number. Okay, so let's go click that play button and see. And as you can see, I can now. Well, I'm moving too fast. So let's add a cooldown. So it seems to be quite hard to just do a single um, to move a single time. So let's add a cooldown. Um, I'm going to create a local block uh, right here just so I can create a bunch of variables and I have them go over the, all over the place. Um, Let's say every so we have a little code. So if just moved else, So if it's not equal to zero, just moved equals true. So this basically uh, makes it so every I can only move every other frame now, uh, which will calm it down significantly. And um, let's just wait for it to recompile and play. Boom. Hmm. Now it's just been as uh, bowsing out by its on its own accord. And um, to be clear, I am not moving my mouse button. Let's just see what I had. I probably just, I just made a mistake. I gotta cut that out of the video. Let's go. Long. I'm no longer printing them. Uh, bedrock. I just said bedrock to be bedrock. Oh, so bedrock isn't completely flat. Nice to know. Hmm. So why is it moving every time? Um, let's just print mouse wheel input every time just because it's every time, not, not just some of the time, every time. What object was that? Oh, right. Um, so C sharp has the, this operator, uh, which basically, um, did I change the target version yet? So basically, this means if it's null, no, oh, null, raycast can't be null.
Hmm. So let's uh, let's quickly print out. The most important thing about programming is debugging. So I'm going to just print out. I'm going to disable this because it's also move selection and uh, select index at a different rate. So that's uh, you know can confound the debugging process. Okay. So what um what I found negative one. Okay, that should never happen. Oh shit! Because C sharp doesn't uh, C sharp modulus doesn't in C sharp the modulus operation. Um, if it's negative, it doesn't negative numbers beget negative numbers, basically. Um, so I have to do this manually. Darn. Blocks that link. Um, all right, let's try that out. Why is the uh, the mouse wheel input negative one? And my Okay. It does seem to be working now. So let's try recount uncommenting this. Okay, yeah, now it works. Still a bit jumpy. So. It's fun. So, what should I do next? Oh, I know. Do some basic train generation. So Minecraft's train generation is actually extremely simple. Um, all they do is they and it's they have about fifty layers of lipstick on the pig at this point. Um, here, let me. Um. Give me okay. I'm gonna get it. I need to refill my water. Uh, but basically, Minecraft train generator uses something called Perlin noise, which is uh, basically it's random noise, but it's smooth. And I can pull up the Wikipedia article. Technically, it's patented or something. Uh, no, Perlin is out of patent, I think. Simplex is a better version of it. Doesn't have some. Uh, you know how sometimes you find those weird floating shapes um that's with those flat edges uh sometimes it's like you know they'll just have a sudden flat discontinuity discontinuity um
Uh, that's because for our living aggregates and polynomials. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's go start with that. Let me check if UD has added Perlin noise yet. So let's go create a new script. And if not, I know there's a lot of standalone. Uh, the algorithm is actually really simple. Um, random that. No. Yeah, no. Um, they don't, and that's perfectly. Let me double check real fast that they don't. Oh, they do. Huh. Cool, but it's only 2D. Um, so Unity uses the 3D version of, uh, so Unity only supports 2D Perlin noise, apparently. Um, and it's under math F, and it's probably really slow. Um, Minecraft does 3D noise, but let's start with doing 2D uh, Perlin noise because it works just as well. Um, it just doesn't have caves. Uh, so we can use 2D Perlin noise to generate the upper layer of the train and then a 3D Perlin noise to build under it. Um, so let's go for each. Uh, no. Let's set size to 32 meters say I might need it that might not be large enough I'm not sure that we'll see in a sec for X size X plus plus. now one thing is that I'm not going to um, I'm not going to make sure that I have it on all edges because of a glitch in unity um, Setting a lot of blocks really fast results in bad stuff happening in Unity. You can't in instantiate. A, so I think I can set this to be like 64 blocks maybe. But I wouldn't want to push it. Um, I would need to make each one happen in a single loop. So I'll just have to add a yield inst instruction every once in a while and use a coroutine. Which is fine, but... Um, yeah, right there. Let me check that. This is not working. I'm sorry, I'm just checking. Uh, I got a message on my computer. Yeah, I, so I have a, I have a standing, uh, like, here, I'll show you. <sighs> Why is this computer running really so slow? So I have another computer on top of a uh, just kind of stack like that. It's really fucking fun. And it's really funny. Um, silly, really, but oh well. You got me. I'm a silly person. 
So, uh, hello Twitch. Goodbye Twitch. Okay, so um, let's do noise. So th the thing they do is that they have a bunch of different noise generated at different scales. So if we do a single pack, and each one is called an octave. Uh, so so let's just do one octave. So four, oh. Norm octaves. Um, math f dot pro noise, and then x y um, times. So it'd be x times. Um, Scale, square scale is 2 to the O. Um, and the reason why it's 2 to the O is basically that's 2 to the power of O. Um, but it's a lot faster for the computer. And it has to be 1 because whatever, math, I was off by 1. Uh, so then I can say scale. Now, um, if I wanted to make it, I think it might be better to do it this way, actually. So it, uh, in doing more layers, at increasing the number of octaves doesn't increase large scale things. It increases small scale things. And I'm gonna also diminish the uh, the effectiveness of it with uh, each layer. I have some on the mixer now. Um, yeah, so, where's that end? Hide. Oh. Um, and then at the end of it, I'm going to say, um, instantiate. So, public object, a uh, game object, or block. Material equal up. Okay, so instantiate material um, new vector three. So x y um, int height, which and retrospect should be called z. For symmetry, Simma Z, uh, and then quaternion. Uh, okay, so what is a quaternion? Is gonna also need to be its own video. Uh, but a quaternion is basically, um, it's like a rotation, but it's it's like a Euler angle, except it's a lot more powerful. Um, Euler angles has that have these problems where if you, um. If you rotate them certain ways, um, they won't work. Uh, like if you try to rotate, uh, if you get to the top, they will. Um, the top is a non-unique representation, and it causes a lot of rotational issues uh, if you look straight up. Um, so, or you even get near it. Quaternions maintain uh, you have four dimensions, uh, but they're normalized, so they're a, a kind of like a surface in 4D um, that always have nice rotational math and they're where we get dot products from too so they're pretty cool um, uh, what I what did I mess up I mucked up somewhere texture gen I forgot to put some icons somewhere where what line Okay, let's just count. Let's do the uh, frenzy counting game. That has all the frenzies and means. Okay, 
I Let me um, try again. Okay, there you go. I fixed it apparently. I and I forgot to create a game object that has that, that script. So, um, and also I should. Um, okay, so let's go create empty game object world and go attach the terrain gen on to it then give it um give it something to build with let's say um blocks let's use stone uh -huh. so you see there's a problem here and uh, there's a couple problems there. Let me uh, let me go and fix something first. Though. The first thing I'm going to fix is making sure that I spawn all these as children. So um, so basically, I want these to all all belong to the world. Um, and also, I need to scale up Z, obviously. So let's go multiply Z, let's go multiply Z by like ten. Um oopsies, that's not the right. No, I definitely don't want if I, if I put that there that would have been really funny. Um I guess it's in the way. Um public Z scale equals 10. So this basically means that the highest anything could get is 30 meters, but it's quite unlikely the average will be around 5-ish. So... Actually... Hmm. Ah, darn it, I switched back over to the work again. So, um, we had to multiply Z by Z scale before we cast to, uh, before we do the cast. Oh dear. Um, let's not maximize it in play and try that again. Okay, so as you see, we have a lot of blocks, and they're all on top of each other, and they're all weirdly scaled. Wild. Um, let me just real fast reset this. Reset. And just for sanity, I'm going to check that, um, I'm going to stop the game, I said that, okay, um, it doesn't have a regular shell reset, let's try this again. Okay. So now it's um now it's generating train and let's create an H scale and let's make it 
0 0.3 for the default value and multiply by it. Oh, shoot up. So this is going to cause it to be uh, a little bit smaller. Um, okay, let's uh, let's scale it down in both senses. So increase the maximum height, and so let's say uh, Z scale 100 meters, and this one to be 10. So just make everything bigger, and also rotate it apparently because I. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, which way is up in Unity? Okay. Up is Y, not Z. I'm just gonna push that away and continue on with that one. Where'd it go? Ah. It's up there now. Okay, let's uh let's go check it out. Ten is much 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 too high, and that is I need to scale it up a lot more if I. So let's um let's set the H scale back down to point three, and the Z scale back to ten. Hello. Hi, what's up? There you go. Um, let's set the H scale to 20. And also, I should probably move up my character starting position. What are you up to, hon? No. So, um, let's go set um, my person to go and set a. What's up? Oh, snap. Oh. Okay. I'm making a game. We should be friends. Yeah, so, um... Now we just have to let's increase the um Um, I'm awake, Jake. I didn't know that I was doing that, though. Thank you for telling me. Um, let me go check what I... Oh, darn, yeah, you're... I should probably switch over to my other webcam, but it's currently mounted so that I... Because I was doing some drawing yesterday. By drawing, I mean I was just... I'm a terrible drawer. <laughs> I was sketching what I was wanting to build for the uh, train uh, for just doing train editor. How are you doing though? Hmm. Well. Well, Jake, it's basically you uh, in the chat right now. Okay. Nice. So.
So now we need to uh, train. Um, we're gonna have to upgrade this to use um, 3D box, uh, 3D Perlin noise if we want to add to support caves. Um, and also, we're gonna uh, we're gonna need to make it so that it keeps generating them. What's up? Okay, so let's uh, let's quickly add the ability to uh, before we do that. Let's go quickly add the ability to Okay, so I can easily run uh, unplace blocks uh, as you see right now. I'm only building the top layer So there's an undercraft <laughs> Hello um, Hello Uh, let me go set this. Oh, um, would you like to be able to hear the Discord call? I'm also kind of surprised that you can't. Um, hey, cat, would you mind saying something real fast? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, let me fix that. Um. It's um I mean the Discord call is not really relevant to what we're talking to uh Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of extra. Oh no, the uh the problem is that it's I have a bunch of desktop devices. Um uh now you should be able to hear the Discord call. Uh but it's just, you know, transpeak, so I'm gonna mute it actually for now. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep it so that you can't hear it. Uh, I'll just leave it though. Uh -oh. well, I'll just deafen myself. Yeah, um. And let's see. That'd be interesting. I guess I could just mute myself. Okay, so let's see. We're generating this. Um, let's work on getting it to have ore deposits now. Um, I think thing I want the way I want to do ore deposits is by generating a bunch of different uh, by generating in each chunk. Yeah. Before we do our deposits, it's a good idea to be able to generate multiple chunks. So let's go and rename this to be a uh, chunk. Uh, let's take this world uh, and make it called chunk. Okay, and um, let's make it a prefab. And let's make it so that it now respects its initial coordinates. So this chunk is set to be zero zero zero. Um, let's set it so that it train gen. Um, the x um, and the y that it gets are, you know, it it respects then its uh, initial position. So let's see there. X zero equals transform that position. At x, um, and zero zero uh, z zero is. Yeah, I should just climb them chunk x, and then uh, to b z. So now it should be able to be. No. Let me let me check something really fast because I just uh didn't get a host. Wow. 
six people just joined. That's pretty cool. Um, then we'll just add that right there and disable the insertion mode. Um, and I have to rename all these Y's where Z T um, and the Z's to Y's and the Z's uh, the Z2's to actual Z's. Alright then. So now I should be able to um, if I spawn in two of these uh, 64 meters apart from each other. So let's go and um, let's go spawn in another chunk and make it at x equals 64. There should not be a, a, a crude line separating them. So let's go back to scene view. Okay, there you go. Now we have a continuous train gen. Nice. Now um, let me double check that it actually worked and I'm not. Oh dear. Okay. Um, <laughs> funny fact. It didn't actually respect. Um, because I did, I forgot to set a uh, a flag that would say spawn it based off the uh, in local coordinates. It was causing it to be overlaid. Let's uh, check again. And fingers crossed. There you go. That was what I was expecting to see the first time. And no seam still. So that's a good thing. Um, so that means we can generate uh, large planes now. Um, now the way Minecraft builds different biomes. Is that instead right now it's following I'm following a, a simple power series for the weight. Um, they have different biomes have different weights. So um, like in an extreme hill biome, the last component is actually more powerful than the first component. So the large it can go up and down very fast. Um, but let's work on getting this so that it, it generates these when I'm walking around. So let's create a C sharp script called chunk loader. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna make it take in um, public uh, terrain gen chunk pre okay so now we have the chunk prefab let's go and let's see let's have it uh an update how, how do we want to uh what data structure should we use for keeping track of what chunks we've loaded and have not um i think i'm going to use a hash map uh so let's just keep a this community is about vector two int. Yes, they do. Okay, so let's do. Um, let's go add uh, a method called get chunk chords. Um, so and it's going to take a vector three and return a vector two i. Um, and all it does is it takes return new vector two int so so input at x zero uh, and the input dot z and both of these need to be in uh, casted down. Uh, casting down uh, because it's faster and because it's easy. So this is gonna allow me to switch my keyboard back to Dvorak again because I am a <laughs> I'm trying to learn Dvorak, okay? Um, 
because like you know i i use my hands every single day of my life i'm gonna you know i type you know 16 hours a day every day for my life for the last 15 years and i'm, I'm starting to have a little bit of issues with this hand okay um and i would rather you know keep my hands in working condition so let's uh let's go create a dictionary so a dictionary in c sharp basic uh is a hash table so it Basically, we'll take um, extra two int and output a terrain gen. Um, I would rename it, except I don't have to rename the file name and reload uh, Visual Studio possibly. Um, chunk, chunk DB. So this is going to be the chunk database. Um, equals new. There you go. Okay, so this is basically where I'm going to store all the chunks that I get. Um, and this is a static method because it doesn't have to be otherwise. Um, I might need to replace this vector to int with a, uh, an actual um, type, but we'll see about that. Uh, now let's see, chunk db, chunk private. Okay, so let's check every frame. Um, transform that position. Um, and let, let's keep a cons float chunk size equals sixty four. Okay, so now we have um, let's keep it an int because. Um, the target platform for this is is uh, mobile, and not all mobile devices have uh, like uh, using their uh, 64-bit integers. Everything basically supports 64-bit now, but it uses more memory. And I switched it over again. Um, let's see what can I do about this update. Um. So every time I update, I'm gonna check if check chunk db, and I'm gonna get contains the contains key uh, get chunk chords cam uh, camera that I'm just gonna transform that position. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to check if it exists, and then I'm going to make another method called uh, to range and make chunk, uh, gen get chunk. Um, and reason why it's called get chunk as opposed to something else, um, um is I want to be able to keep it open-minded about loading from a server. Um, get junk at vector to i int post c post. Okay. So, and then I'm going to um, getting for getting the chunk coordinate. I am also going to divide by uh, chunk size. Um, now dividing by an integer by another integer, true in kids. So it's going to round down. Um, this way, there's going to be a chunk at every single position. Um, Um, so if I'm going to use a try get return chunk
So I'll just go and get the chunk. Uh, that's in C post. And if it exists, then just return it. Um, if it doesn't exist, then I'm gonna have to generate it. So do I have the uh, instantiate chunk prefab? Uh, trans C plus okay uh, let's do So this is basically going to return where should I spawn this chunk? Um, so vector three uh, C plus dot x times chunk size zero uh, C plus dot y times chunk size. And it has to return vector three. So this this tells me where to spawn the new chunk. Um, uh, chunk. C post for turning that identity. Cool. I don't really understand how um, okay. so this should cause it when I enter the next chunk it should cause me to generate it um, and let's go and test it now oh I need to attach it to my forehead and also let's delete this and this and then just drop this train uh, this chunk loader into my forehead. Boom. Chuckle boom. And it didn't do anything. Um not even instantiating. Did I attach it appropriately? Okay, I just don't have a chunk we have. Nice. Um there we go. Still not instantiating anything. Okay. Let's just get ready to replace that with the kitchen cat. I don't care. Huh. It's interesting. It's generating chunks, but it's generating the wrong chunks. So it seems to be like it should. Yeah. Okay. Not generating the right one. And generate. <laughs> now, this is inherently not infinite, but it's pretty big. Um, because I'm using floating point thirty-two. When I, I mean Unity, Unity uses 32-bit floating points um, everywhere, um, and there's no way to change this without 
not using basically so you can Kerbal Space Program uses Unity, okay? Um no it's useless. This is because um I don't actually check. That's why I'm generating terrains right now. I don't actually check how big of a gap there is. Load it loaded before I, I hit the gun. Nice. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is to have it load not just the one that's right immediately before me, but I should load one around me too. You know, have a chunk radius type deal. So I just keep trying to get the chunks that are nearby just to make sure they exist, you know? And then eventually I'll start working on unloading chunks that shouldn't be loaded anymore. Um, I should also force re-enable it, so I can just disable all the chunks that are far away. You know, right now I've loaded a lot of chunks. Yeah, so basically, this is what? This isn't even two hours worth of work so far. <laughs> I love how simple Minecraft is. Oh, did I, uh, did I tell you guys? Uh, I'm going to be working on Minecraft next year. Uh, which is really cool. Um, uh, Minecraft VR. Let's, uh, let's do the uh, chunk rating radius and also make it so that it unloads itself. Um, if can uh, run the camera dot main. Oops, camera dot main dot transform dot position dot distance. Um, let's go and say public constant int include that chunk size. Let's see, what is it supposed to set? Uh, set active? Huh. Okay, let's just set rag. Oh, what the heck? Eh, I'll just use the deprecated version. Okay. Set active now. We'll set its children to be active uh, and deactivated. So that's a good thing. Um, and I need to make sure to um, let me make public void load. No, I'm public void unload. So, just so I can load and unload chunks. And it's just gonna be this, uh, which will just turn off the renderer. <laughs> um, and I'll just set it to be twice the. Okay, and. Let's go and set it to that. It issues the load command every time. And also, error curve chunk equals.
Ah, darn it, Dvorak. How do I disable Dvorak? Language references. I would like to not have Dvorak anymore. I. Okay, there you go. There you go. No, I won't keep switching to Dvorak anymore unless I have it currently. Oh, thank gosh, not Dvorak. Okay. Um. Yeah, I. I guess I just accepted my fate that I'm going to get arthritis. Public and chunk radius equals two. Sure. Um, the x chunk radius, um, negative chunk radius, and this is not going to be entirely accurate, but it doesn't have to be, because it's um, arbitrary measurement. Because video game, I, that's my favorite thing about video games, actually, is that you can be kind of wrong, and it doesn't matter. Um, I should just, the, should just use, um, the reason I'm doing this is I don't need to, Fun fact about this, um, vector 2 int, that's 0. You would expect this to be a constant, but it's actually not. It returns new vector 2 int 0, 0. Um, the reason why is if you've returned a, a constant value, um, because structs in C sharp are mutable, uh, someone will, some wise guy will end up writing to it, and now 0 is no longer 0. It's just fun, it's just JavaScript level, wow. That is code. Um, so, cur chunk plus b. And I should probably set the, um, I should make the chunk generation asynchronous so that uh, even though it's loading the chunk, it doesn't, um, right now it causes, the game is all single threaded. Um, and blocking. So if okay, so it just loaded a lot more chunks than I expected to load. Let's see how many chunks. Are. And no, that's a reasonable number. Okay, let's make it so that I can always see the scene view, and let's zoom out. Okay, so that's a reasonable radius. As you see, it's uh, not not rectangular. It's uh, two in every direction. So let's go for a walk then. I suppose. Oh, look at that, 24 frames per second, intense Minecraft performance. I think I might try switching over to uh, to a Ray Tracer for the giggles. Oh, did I? Uh, I didn't. Um, darn it. Unload. Okay, let's hope that this works. Yeah, so right now I'm not even bothering trying to save. I might actually try and there you go. Yes, haha, -ha, it works. And uh, because they have different, uh, they have different standards of beauty. Um, so let's see. The CPU main is taking 239 milliseconds. Hmm. Do you think it's because I'm enabling and disabling parts of the world? Probably. Let's uh let's stop doing that. Um so let's just set chunk radius to be one right now. Um oh dear gosh. Just find me the player. Let me stop this right now. Okay, and uh chunk radius one. 
these chunks are these chunks are huge. Let's unload them after they get three away. How about, uh, because that's apparently unloading them too soon. So, four away. Now, uh, should leave it loaded. And let's just keep going the same direction as before. Hmm. It should be loading this chunk that's right in front of me. And then I said that it loaded a couple chunks. Now, as you see right now, that dropped the CPU uh, main time to 17 milliseconds from 300. Okay. Let me check something. Um, okay, so it's not generating a radius in that direction. Let's just see if I cross this line, will it? Oh no, just being lazy with the loader. Hmm. But when it does load, it loads two at a time. That is the most intriguing issue. I'm gonna see if anyone, huh? Buzz the most tree lounge shell. What the? Oh, right, I named all closed captions in OBS. That doesn't work at all. Look, okay, so let me go fire up Chrome. Now, there is this, uh, no, don't do that. Web caption, okay? Web captioner. So, start captioning. No, get started. Okay, so right now, Look at this. So, this is a website using Google Chrome's um, voice recognition thing. And it's basically getting everything I'm saying all right. Not everything, but it's, it's good enough to get a pretty good idea of what I'm saying. I don't understand why this can't be integrated into OBS. Well, actually, I do know. Um, it's licensing issues. Messaging issues. Uh, yeah, so this is the same voice recognition stuff that, voice to text that Google uses for, like, their version of Cortana. Definitely not a Microsoft robot. Hello, Mixer. Yeah, do you guys have anything else you want me to do? So I don't know what, uh, here. So I need to, I need to, uh, change. I think tomorrow I'm gonna write a, uh, I'm gonna show you how to, how the right way to render these things. And then a fun way to render these things. Uh, because right now every single blocks, block is a block. Like, each one of these things is its own independent object that every time, every frame it gets a call, an update call, and everything, and it's crazy nonsense. Um, and then I'll see if I can pull apart the uh, the C There's a fairly popular um, for the de the Windows transition. I could either see. I wonder if they'll let me generate a binding for the uh, the server library. I'll have to talk to my manager. Um, I mean, for non obviously non profit educational usages. Um,
yeah it's uh and uh you know because this is the P uh, pc edition of, of minecraft it needs to have terrible performance and i think i'm achieving that right now with that 30 frames per second um because it doesn't understand that all of these things are the same thing uh now even though it is uh it's not even batching at all right now let's uh, let's go enable batching um so edit project say uh project same player it might wait that might actually be a pro thing only Let, let's go check real fast um Yeah. It's only 10 o'clock. I guess I could keep going. So I do want to eat some ramen. I had a huge lunch. Um, here, let me check other settings. Dynamic batching. Yes. Okay. Um, that actually dropped the frame rate. Wow, okay, that's really interesting. Um, so I just told it to enable dynamic batching. And it just dropped down to 21 frames per second. Without dynamic batching, it was 40 frames per second. Illuminati confirmed. Huh. That's 40 frames per second again. I think my science isn't very good. The GPU scanning is not necessary. But anyhow, the point is, is that this doesn't seem to be actually, uh, so right now I'm drawing 20,000 blocks or 30,000 blocks and it's, it's basically like old Minecraft where it's like, Hey computer, computer, I have a thing and it has six edges, uh, sorry, six faces and eight points and they're connected like this, you know? And they draw, and they have this texture, and it says that for every single box, which is bad. Um, now I can enable. Let me try enabling. Um, let me go enable for the materials. Um, double check that I'm okay. Let's go select them all and enable GPU instances. So let's go see that. Um, okay, and that now is 77 frames per second. That's not bad. And, um, yeah, apparently. So now it's bad. So now it's understanding hey, computer, I have a lot of these. You should draw them together. Which this is actually working surprisingly well. So this is with like no render optimizations at all. And you know, this is a uh, for Minecraft. Um, my chunks are 64 on each side, so it's four times larger than Minecraft. This is a render distance of eight chunks. Um, right now, I'm getting 60 frames per second. Let's see what I get on Minecraft. This is going to evolve really quickly into a Minecraft stream. If you guys don't stop me, uh, dear, I need to go look at my Minecraft password. One second. Um, I'm gonna have to go grab my other computer. One second. Yeah, uh, it's a Minecraft. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna stop for today, I think. Well thank you guys so much for uh thank you so much for uh for for joining me today. Uh I'm gonna do another stream uh tomorrow, like the same time. Um yeah. Good night. Uh, where's the PS?